the American dream is dead. I see comments from you guys sometimes that, you know, where some of you will say, angry, you're a fantastic young man, you know, or you're just so knowledgeable. It's impressive. But the thing is that so much of the things I've learned, I've learned from the manosphere. I've told you guys that the manosphere is going to evolve. It's going to evolve beyond the place where discussions about women happen. This is the main reason why the alphabet law enforcement agencies are so worried about the manosphere. Because the manosphere is a place where men are coming together to discuss the actual things that are happening in society. They're talking about money. They're talking about finance. They're talking about reality. And the very moment that men begin to begin to put a focus on what's happening around us, then the topic of tyranny arises. And, you know, governments need weak men because if you have weak men, then you can control the population and you can basically do whatever you want to do. If you have strong men, then strong men won't tolerate BS. The American dream has always been just that. It's a dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. Something that George Carlin said. And people are beginning to wake up and realize that not only was it all a dream, but we're living in a nightmare. It's crazy because I see some baby boomers saying that they're the ones who actually saved the world and picked up the pieces and rebuilt, you know, after they inherited from the other generations and we're welcome, which is an absolute joke. I learn a lot from the manosphere. And one thing that I've come to realize and to understand very clearly is that we can't go back. Prices cannot go down. You see, when deflation occurs as a society, the people win. But if deflation occurs, meaning the prices go down, then the banks lose. The banks, the state, the cities, they cannot afford to pay back their debts. So when inflation is high, that allows them to offset debt, meaning that it's going to be a lot easier for them to pay down that debt because the value of the dollar has decreased so significantly. Something strange is happening. One of the reasons why, when you look at electronics, the cost of electronics has actually decreased over decades, at least it did before recently, is because it gets cheaper to manufacture over time. There are new processes, and the more that you the more you manufacture, you know, the the lower the prices go. That's not happening anymore. Not with a lot of things. We're seeing consumer products skyrocketing. And we're saying, well, why, why the heck is this happening? Why is it that technology, certain technologies, you know, for example, LCD displays, OLED displays, and OLED are, OLED are a bit newer, but LCD displays are still extremely expensive. Semiconductors are still extremely expensive. There's so many of these things that are still extremely expensive. The parts that we need to manufacture products, extremely expensive. Food, extremely expensive. Real estate, it costs more now than ever to build to build something, even though we have technology today that we didn't have yesterday. So the manufacturing process should be even more refined. I'm going to tell you this, and I want you to understand this. This is all deliberate. If real estate prices go down, we experience deflation significant deflation. The real estate market and these other markets are some of the only things that are tap, that are literally holding up the value in the United States for the banks and so forth. If the value of real estate goes down significantly, the banks lose massive amounts of money. Massive amounts of money. It would be extreme deflation. And while it would benefit the general public significantly, it would hurt them severely. I'll say this right now, very, very clearly, that if something happens, the government would have to bail all of these banks out. If we have another meltdown, massive meltdown, like, like we saw in 2008, the government would have to bail these banks out. 
the massive amounts of bailouts that these banks would need if, if we actually had like a real readjustment would be in the trillions. We are printing so much money so rapidly right now that the value is deflating insanely. They're cutting food stamps, y'all. Food stamps. They're cutting food stamps. They're cutting, making cuts to Medicare. Don't get me wrong. Medicare, Medicare is a very over is very inflated program. But when they are making these cuts, you have to understand that they are desperate right now. They are desperate because the money is de is deflating so quickly. The more you print, the less it's worth. The U.S. cannot make its interest payments. It cannot make its interest payments while also paying for Social Security. Hence, they need to increase taxes. But people are completely, com people are completely uh, living on credit right now. So if you increase taxes, then, I mean, what, is, what are people supposed to do? Because many of them are tapped out completely. The prices are not going down. They're staying high and they're being kept high. No one can afford these properties, and people are trying to run away from society and go out to the woods and set up set up camp out there. They're being dragged back to Western society. They're being dragged back to the cities. Law enforcement is coming out there and dragging them back. And I will say this, you know, when you end up having, when, when we have a major meltdown and you have more and more people going out there, you're going to see hundreds of law enforcement agencies hundreds of members of law enforcement going out there and rounding these people up like they're criminals, putting many of them in handcuffs, saying that they're doing illegal things out there. All They're going to spread all kinds of lies and rumors. And when they drag them back to, to the cities, they want them to be out there. They're going to punish them for being homeless. And they'll basically just find them, keep on finding them, and that's it. We're going to basically punish you. We're going to torment you. Get up and move. That basically you're punished for being homeless. And we're going to see the a massive meltdown, and it's only going to be the haves and have-nots. I hear from some people. I'll be very honest, who are disconnected with reality, because they act because they don't feel it. You know, they don't feel the extra cost. There are million. This is this is the thing. There are people who are millionaires. And some of them feel it, some of them don't, but it's not because of the reasons you think. There are a lot of millionaires, right? And they're millionaires, but they live far below their means. So these are people who would never, who don't even order for McDonald's. Like they're not going to pay $15 for a Big Mac. They shop around. They're very, very frugal with the way they live. That doesn't mean they don't live well. They live well. They have everything they need. Pretty much most of the things they want because they don't, for them, simplicity is luxury. And they actually live far, they live far below their means. They won't waste the kind of money that the typical person will waste. They won't even, like some of these people, they won't, they may not even shop at Walmart. That might be too rich for their blood. I'm so serious. Like that might be too rich for their blood. Walmart. Like they are very, very frugal. They have, you know, they, the way that they, like the way that they get things, they, they, they really do their research. They do their research. They look at the, what the things should actually cost. They shop around. They stock up. They do things like that. But the thing is, you have to understand, to stay a millionaire, that's how you have to live. You know? I see some of these videos with some of these jokers who are like, oh, I, I, you know, he, my boyfriend, he makes half a million dollars a year. So it makes sense that he would, he would buy a ring for me that cost at least $10,000 or $50,000. That's nothing to him. That's nonsense. Because if even if he makes half a million dollars a year, most men don't. All right. Let's say someone, let's say, let's say 250000 a year. Makes $250,000 a year. Maybe after after taxes, maybe he gets to keep 175. Does he have student loans? He, I mean, yeah, he has some student loans. Okay, so how much is he paying in student loans? Right? That's like let's say $25,000 a year. So take that right off his take that right off there. So he's left with what maybe around 150. 
And then how much goes into 401k? Well, you know, maybe around, you know, let's say around $35,000. Let's say 25. Let's say 25. Okay. So now he's left with 125,000. So from 250,000, he's left with 125,000. And where do you guys live? You guys live in Miami? What's the what are the rents out there like? Oh, it's about it's 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 kind of, it's expensive. It's expensive. You know, he spends around at least like over fifty thousand dollars a year on 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 just rent, over fifty k. So now he's down to, you know, he's now he's down to right around right around sixty five sixty five thousand dollars, and how much money is going in save? Like guys, when you start doing the math, you start doing the math, you realize like people are not keeping track of their money. This is why they're brokies. You know, and you get into a relationship with a lot of these women and you become stupid. You're not keeping track of your money. You're not being realistic. This is the reason why some why you'll have a guy who makes fifty thousand dollars a year. But within a, within a few years, he has more money than someone who's making half a million dollars a year. Because the person who is making half a million dollars a year doesn't even realize how much money they're spending. The guy making $50,000 a year, he was smart enough to go out and get himself a mobile home that he paid off. Got a piece of land or he's or he's living in a like a trail, he's renting, you know, re- renting like land that costs like $300 a month or whatever, right? $3600 a year and he has a mobile home that that's paid off. And you know, he lives within his he lives below his means, so almost all of his money goes into savings or stocks, or real estate, whatever, or Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. While all of these other idiots out are out there trying to court women, trying to live these, you know, high lives, buy expensive cars. I remember how much I wanted to purchase, like, get a, own a Tesla. And now, like, there are people who are still trying to argue, bro, you pick up one of these electric cars, they do not have the same value as some old crap car from the 80s. Because once the battery dies, you're screwed. And the amount that it costs to fix these cars is astronomical. And I was reading about it today, like Tesla, like Elon Musk doesn't want to fix these cars. When something goes wrong with these electric cars, they don't want to fix them. They're like, if you have $85,000 to buy one of these cars, you have money to fix it. Like, it's 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 absolutely stupid. Like, you know, you're, you have one of these expensive cars, these expensive electric cars. Don't think you're just going to take it to your neighborhood neighborhood uh, repair man and have him fix you up. These things cost so much darn money. Like, they are not worth the expense. They're fun toys. And these charging stations, what they're doing is they're basically just trying to replace gasoline. So instead of you spending, you know, tons of money in gas, you're you're just going to spend tons of money for electric, for electrical charging. And they'll say, well, it's still, it's still cheaper than gasoline. You know, you're spending five, it's what is it? Five bucks a gallon. You know, the equivalent, I mean, you're spending the equivalent of, you're spending the equivalent of three fifties. It's three fifty compared to five. That's way, that's cheap. That's cheap. But what's your overhead cost? What's your actual cost? Like 10 cents? Like 10 cents? So they're pocketing a crazy amount of money and still telling you that you're doing, like, like, look how much money you're saving. That's how all of these companies work, all right? Because they always have, it's profit upon profit. Guys, the, the notion of, like, you know, cheap real estate, like these tiny homes, these tiny homes are expensive, bro. A lot of these tiny homes are costing upwards of $100,000 for a freaking shack. A shack. Like a lot of these tiny homes are shacks. You are paying $100,000 for a shack? No. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The truth is, you see a lot of dudes literally getting a one. They call it a one room. Like in other countries, they call them a one room. And even to build a one room is expensive. Now, you have dudes going to Home Depot, getting sheds, actual sheds, okay, and basically converting them into a into a livable space where it's basically a one room, 
It's just a one small room. That's it. And they may have like a small outhouse if they need to. That's the smartest thing to do. One room, maybe an outhouse, and you sleep in the one room. You sleep in there. And, you know, I mean, you set up a water, you set up a generator, set up a generator, solar, you know, solar panel, septic tank, water heater, you know, you know, tank to store water, water heater. You set all of that stuff, stuff up, cost you a couple of that. You could do it cheap, depending on how you, depending on what you want to do. You could set something up real cheap, really cheap, really affordable. But just a couple, with even a thousand dollars, even a thousand dollars, if you know what you're doing, you can get something cheap going, something very, very cheap. Set that up, and basically, you know, your room is just a place where you're gonna sleep, play games, work, whatever. You know, insulate the walls. You know, you could do insulate the walls so that it's warm in there. And that's it. And that's what a lot of men are going to do. A lot of men are just going to start living in sheds. Living in a shed. Not even a tiny house. Not even these $100,000 tiny homes. They're going to start living in an outright shed. Because this is, it's enough. And of course, women are going to be cursing men. Like, oh, this is how you're living? You're a brokey. You're a brokey. You know, you don't want to be a real man. And for, for, for a lot of men, they're going to find this great living, nice and simple, very comfortable, you know? They, you know, they're, they're one, they're, this little room, this little thing, this little shed, it's large enough for them to fit a small mattress in there or whatever, or a, or a couch or whatever, you know? And basically, they'll live comfortably. They'll live comfortably and they'll live comfortably in there. They have like a hot pot in there or whatever. You know, when they want some tea, they'll heat some tea up, you know, you know, this, this, you know, maybe a small refrigerator or a small cooler. So they'll have cool drinks, something very small. People will be amazed just how well they have it set up in there. Guys, when man wants to do it, a man can be very, very economical, very, very economical work with just, a, you know, I said it plenty of times, the average man could live happily in a shoebox at the side of the road. And that's really what, what's going to, that's really what's going to come down to men who remain in Western society. A lot of them are going to literally live in a shoebox at the side of the road. And women are going to be furious about this, calling these men broke boys, disgusting, shameless. And men are not going to care because these men are going to have money. You're going to have money in the bank. You have money in the bank. They're going to have Bitcoin. They're going to have their passports. Think about it carefully. These men are going, a lot of these men are going to say, I'm not going to spend a single dollar more than I have to in Western society. They're going to put their money in crypto. They're going to buy gold. And if anything ever happens, they'll pick up and leave. As long as they're not banned from leaving the country, they'll just pick up and leave. And they'll go overseas. And that's the end of it. And you can see that women are just like throwing all of this shade right now while they want to hold on to as much as they can, as much of the spoils that feminism got them, while at the same time demanding that men come back and save society and prop society up so that they can continue to keep to keep all of their uh all of their all of their stolen games. Ill gotten gain all of their ill gotten gains. Guys, don't forget that I have another channel called Angry where I discuss gaming, anime, geek stuff, nerd stuff, real world stuff, or whatever else interests me. There's a link to an description of the video. Go check it out. Subscribe to the channel. Support my work. And if you're enjoying, enjoying the content on this channel and you want even more of this content, you can head over to the Men Walking Away channel. There's a link to an description of the video. You, you can go and check it out. Subscribe to the channel. Support my work. Guys, what do you think regarding all of this? The American dream is dead. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away. And cheers.